Unit 81. Alternatives to modal auxiliary verbs. Speaking and listening. Obligation and permission. Listen. Please welcome from America, Mr. Bob Allen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to be here. I hope you're all well. As a matter of fact, I've been feeling a little depressed lately. I saw my doctor a couple of weeks ago. I said, doctor, I'm depressed. I'm in show business and I can't sing, I can't dance, I can't act, and I can't play a musical instrument. She said, well, you'll have to find another job. I said, I can't do that, doctor. I'm a star. <laughs> Actually, I took singing lessons once. After a couple of lessons, I said to my wife, what kind of songs should I sing? She said, you should sing Christmas carols. Then we'd only have to listen to you once a year. <laughs> She's a strange lady, my wife. She uh, went into a bank the other day to cash a check. The guy in the bank said, before I can cash the check, you'll have to identify yourself. So she took a mirror out of her bag, looked at herself in the mirror and said, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I almost didn't get here this evening. I had a small problem at the hotel. I hate having to wait for taxis, so I said to the hotel doorman, could you call me a taxi immediately? He said, sure, you're a taxi. <laughs> Listen. I was telling you about my doctor before. She has some strange patients. There was a guy there once who thought he was a dog. I was talking to him in the waiting room. He was sitting on the floor looking really depressed. I said, why don't you take a seat? You'd be more comfortable. He said, I'm not allowed to sit on the furniture. <laughs> We're having a, a great time here in Britain. My wife is with me on the trip. Last weekend, we were in Wales. Beautiful country. We took a little train through the hills. A little country train stopped every two or three minutes at little stations, and it went so slowly. It was incredible. I said to the driver, can't you go a little faster? He said, yes, but I'm not allowed to leave the train. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been nice talking to you. Good night. Bob Allen, ladies and gentlemen. Ability. Listen. <laughs> Bob Allen, ladies and gentlemen. He certainly seems to meet some strange people. Actually, I have a friend who's a little strange. I saw her the other day. She'd just got back from a holiday in Switzerland. I said, what did you think of the scenery? She said, I couldn't see much of it. There were a lot of mountains in the way. <laughs> and my neighbour, oh, my neighbour's really strange, Mr Hepplewhite. I used to see him in his kitchen every morning, standing by the window, hitting himself on the head with a loaf of bread. I couldn't understand it. Anyway, I didn't say anything. Then one day he was standing there, hitting himself on the head with a chocolate cake. Well, I couldn't stop myself. I had to ask him about it. I said, every day you hit yourself on the head with a loaf of bread, but today you're hitting yourself on the head with a chocolate cake. He said, yes, today's my birthday. <laughs> Strange. Listen. <laughs> well, before we leave you, ladies and gentlemen, some advice on medical problems. Doctor? Doctor? Yes, what's the problem? On this medicine, it says, take four teaspoons before every meal. That's right. I won't be able to do that, Doctor. Why not? 
I've only got three teaspoons. <laughs> Doctor? Doctor? Yes? What's the problem? After the operation, will I be able to play the violin? Yes, of course you will. That's fantastic. I've never been able to play it before. <laughs> Doctor? Doctor? Yes, what's the problem? I've never been able to tell the truth. I can't stop telling lies. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor? Doctor? Yes, what's the problem? I've never been able to talk to people. Everyone ignores me. Next! <laughs> <laughs> Other points. Listen. Hello, Norman. Hi, Frank. Stella. Hi. Are you doing anything later this evening? We're going for a meal. Perhaps you'd like to join us. Thanks, but I'm meeting my cousin. Daisy? Yes. We're supposed to be meeting here at 7.30, which is bound to be late. She usually is. She won't get here until after 8. I'm willing to bet on it. I saw her yesterday. Who? Daisy? Yes. You know what she said to me? What? She said... Let me give you some advice. Never forget, if you're wearing one red sock and one blue sock, you're bound to have another pair like that in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like good advice. I think she's a little crazy, you know. No, she's just got an unusual sense of humour. What would you like to drink? Song Cousin Daisy My cousin Daisy isn't really crazy, no, that is only a rumour When people say crazy, they're thinking of Daisy's unusual sense of humour I remember when she had a fall I didn't think that it was funny at all She said, I got off the bus at the end of my street And managed to land on my head instead of my feet My cousin Daisy isn't really crazy, no, that is only a rumour People are so crazy, they're thinking of Daisy's unusual sense of humour She had to stay in hospital so they could examine her head and If there's one thing that Daisy hates, it's having to stay in bed She said, what will I do all the time? The doctor said, don't worry, you'll be fine You've got a lot of books and a portable radio A small operation and then you'll be able to go Daisy said, Doctor, in a trembling voice, a voice filled with hesitation. Will I be able to play the drums after the operation? Daisy was pleased when the doctor said she would. Yes, you will. She said to the doctor, That's really good. In fact, that's what I call a miracle cure. I've never been able to play the drums before. Ow! My cousin Daisy isn't really crazy, no, that is only a rumour. But people say crazy, they're thinking of Daisy's unusual sense of humour. My cousin Daisy isn't really crazy, no, that is only a rumour. Attitudes. Listen. Hello? Anna? Oh, hello, Dad. Hello, Gran. Hello, Andrew. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. That's why I'm in hospital. Uncle William! Elizabeth, this is a pleasant surprise. Captain! What is it, O'Hara? Listen. It is vital that no one be allowed in and that no one be allowed out. No one at all, sir? No one at all, Sergeant. Ladies and gentlemen, to open this year's travel fair, Mr. William Jones of Sunshine Travel. We'll have solved all the world's problems. Dr. Winter, do you agree with that? No, I don't. What do you think, Doctor? Well, Mr. Lincoln, I think you ought to stop smoking. Listen and repeat. What do you think, Doctor? What's the problem, Officer? 
We'd like your opinion, Professor. Waiter, there's a fly in my soup. Special English. English in Science and Technology. Three. Listen. You're from Kuwait, Ahmed, aren't you? I am, yes. I work as a petroleum engineer there. Is this your first trip abroad? Oh, no, not at all. I've been to England many times. And I've travelled to the States as well. In fact, I worked there in Texas for two years. And may I ask the purpose of your visit here to Britain this time? I'm very interested in North Sea gas. Oh, you haven't come here to buy, have you, Ahmed? <laughs> no, no, not to buy. <laughs> to learn a little, perhaps. In Kuwait, we have been more concerned with oil than with gas. I see. But um, seriously, Ahmed, could you tell us a little more about the production of natural gas from crude oil? What would you like to know? Well, I was wondering if you could give us some, some idea of how much gas a certain volume of crude can contain. Yes, but uh, first of all, I must say that it's difficult to give a simple answer. You will understand, of course, that crude oils differ from well to well and from reservoir to reservoir. Mm, certainly. But perhaps I can give you a particular example. Fine, Ahmed. In my country, at a place called Burgan, we have a very large reservoir with a great many oil wells. In the reservoir, Burgan crude contains about 80 times its own volume of dissolved gas. 80 times its own volume? Mm -hmm. Well, that means that one cubic foot of Burgan crude can produce about 80 cubic feet of gas at the surface. True. About 80 cubic feet of dissolved gas in every cubic foot of crude in the reservoir. Mm. Synopsis. Dialogue. Please welcome, from Newcastle-upon-Tyne, Mr. Bill Jones. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to be here. I hope you're all well. As a matter of fact, I'm not feeling very well myself. I haven't been able to get much sleep lately. I saw my doctor a couple of weeks ago. She said, what's the problem? I said, I snore so loud that I keep waking myself up. She said, well, you'll have to sleep in another room. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I've decided that I'm not getting enough exercise. So I went to the swimming pool yesterday. I climbed up to the highest diving board. Suddenly, someone shouted, Don't dive! There's no water in the pool! I said, That's okay. I can't swim. <laughs> Do you know, I once travelled from Edinburgh to London without a ticket. Didn't cost me a penny. My friend said, How did you manage to do that? I said, I walked. <laughs> Children are funny, aren't they? I heard two little boys talking on the bus the other day. One said, When I grow up, I'm going to marry the girl who lives next door. The other one said, Why? And the first one said, because I'm not allowed to cross the road. <laughs> and, and I heard a little girl talking to her father. Her father said, Why have you been telling all your friends that I'm stupid? The little girl said, Sorry, I didn't know it was supposed to be a secret. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been nice talking to you. Good night. Jones, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>